Welcome to this new add-on spotlight. In this add-on spotlight, we're gonna look at the Fokker F7A and then the multiple types of it. So this is the paid add-on which was delivered in addition to world update number seven, right? So uh, you might have seen it. Uh, world update number seven takes place in Australia. Some videos uh, are already on my channel, uh, specifically the ones uh, with 4K, those are the nice ones uh, because then you can really see the difference. Uh, while I'm talking, I clicked to some of the aircrafts already, right? So you have the Fokker in multiple options. One of them is the uh, Josephine Ford with the skis. Uh, there are also normal types, uh, let's say the, uh, the the 1M and the 3M, and that uh, refers to the number of engines. In this case, this one has one engine and the other uh, aircraft have all three engines. Uh, it also has a floating version, right? So you can also land on the water. Uh, if you are looking for more liveries, unfortunately, all aircrafts come or all types come with one livery. Um, the most modern one is the uh, Retrofit, that is this one. Uh, that one comes with multiple liveries. So be aware of that. If you want to have another livery and you want to use the old aircrafts, then you won't find anything. But if you select the Retrofit, you will find multiple ones like the Aviators Club, uh, the KLM version. The Xbox Aviators Club, uh, Sabina, uh, Litoria, Lapi. So let's select uh, KLM for now. Uh, we're on Honolulu Airport, right? So let's see uh, how it is. So if you wonder how much it costs, well, roughly 15 euros or 15 dollars, that's the approximate amount, right? You can only buy it via the marketplace. Uh, you can't buy it, uh, say, outside of the marketplace, so be aware of that. So, already loaded. We need to change the uh, lightning. Because else it's a little bit dark, so let me do that. So, this is it. So, I must warn you, the retrofit version is completely different. You can compare it a bit with the Junkers, right? Which also was coming with a retrofit. And this has a lot of options. If you might try the other ones first, you might be disappointed because normally this aircraft doesn't have a lot of options. Actually, that's, let's say, might be pretty normal. And to show you the difference, we're going to switch to the other version in a few minutes. So here you can see a lot of stuff, right? You can see the, the yokes, you can uh, hide them. Uh, you have the, uh, the COM1, uh, the transponder, uh which is let me zoom in a bit to make it and let's first hide the yoke so we've got the uh the adf uh we've got the communication radios we've got a nice garmin system here uh which we can use uh this is to identify ourselves right so this is to set the identification code of the aircraft and then when looking at the rest, we can have, we see the compass here, the airspeed meter here, and then also here's a nice meter which shows us the, say, how far we're steering, right? How far we're turning. And these are the, the thresholds or the recommended thresholds. Uh, then we've got the uh, horizon here, the visible horizon. And here we've got another navigation system, right? This is to use the VOR, right? So you can set the course using the CDI. And here we've got the heading. In some aircrafts, these buttons are uh, turned around, so keep that in mind. In the center, we've got the oil and fuel, the RPMs, and the pressure. Uh, so keep that in mind. Since we have three engines, this engine one, engine two, engine three. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you are, let's say, looking at the arms, at the RPMs, for example, don't or prevent that they're going into the red. The same thing, of course, applies to the oil and fuel, fuel temperature. Vertical climb speed, right? How much are we climbing or decreasing? And here we've got the altimeter, which shows us the uh, altimeter where we are. Um, this one doesn't work, the PTT button, and it's probably used for uh, nav or for talking. Uh, cylinder temperatures and the carbon and carburetor temperature. And here we've got a nice clock. Uh, Passenger intercom, right? So you can uh, can talk to the passengers and generators uh, one and three. 
wonder I wonder where number two uh, is going but let's see uh, <laughs> if we can find that uh, on the co-pilot uh, piece there's the uh, gyro suction uh, which we don't have on the uh, pilot seats uh, here are the transponder codes nice uh, recognition system right 2000 3000 uh, 7600 and 7700 uh, all nice and uh, we've got the uh, pilot uh, static source That's something I need to figure out uh, what it's used for but we will do that in a future video here's a nice microphone and if we would turn we would see nothing because we need to go into the different mode uh, in a few but we do that in a few minutes if we look to the right we can see the right engines uh, really I would say cool to see right really a lot of detail and if we would move a little bit further on the top of the aircraft, we can see a lot of information here. So we've got the fuel boost, we've got the ignitions to start to start the engines. Um, here are some uh, the engine master buttons, uh, which we can use. Uh, the primer, uh, the fuel switch pump, the start of the engine. And that's all divided in the three engines again, right? So this part is for engine three, engine two, second one, and engine three, the latest one. Here we can see some fuses, normally you don't need to do anything with that. If we continue our trip, we can find the uh, fuel pump power, but that one is, for some reason, it's uh, inactive, so you can't, well, you can press it, but nothing happens. So be aware of that. And then here we have the alternators, uh, which we can switch on the batteries. So this is the electricity part of the aircraft, right? The nav lights. You will find them all here some of the buttons are not yet working uh, i do hope that they will release an update where some things are being fixed uh, but let's see on the left we also have the right engine <laughs> yeah very confusion left engine right is the vendor of the engine uh, if we go outside we can see that this is delivery right so you can see that the uh, this is the klm one uh, it looks pretty impressive also if you're coming closer you can see really a lot of details right this are the wings of wood uh, the painting is really nice uh, also the uh, I'd say uh, screws or I'm not sure what it is uh, or bolts which are connecting the wings to the aircraft itself uh, now let's go inside if it allows us to do because we can also look inside the aircraft and here you can see okay hey this is where the passenger seat and you can see really nice details including uh, the floor has been detailed uh, the door is open right so we can uh, simply visit the uh, pilots and you can already see the pilots sitting there uh, some nice suitcases here so all good uh, the thing oh, which we didn't visit yet uh, because it's a little bit hard to see are the uh, few oil shut uh, levelers uh, the thing is that they you can't control them oh, or maybe you can control them but we're in the wrong mode so let's switch to it to the different mode uh, those are here right so you can uh, close the uh, fuel so to make sure that you uh, shut down the engines we've got the anti ice here we've got the propellers uh, the rpms uh, and the throttle and the uh, mixture which you can control right strongly recommend you to do it uh, and here we've got the uh, say brakes and also the steering uh, mechanism to manage the aircraft while taxiing and you can see some nice uh, advertising here from the vendor who created uh, this aircraft so everything cool so let's uh, start the engines i'm gonna do it a quick way i will create a different video uh how to uh, manually start the engines and let's go outside and Let's enjoy the sound of the engines. And they're now running, I would say, on speed, right? Nice sound, isn't it? So let's go inside again, right? You can see that everything is working, right? The navigation radio and the communication radio is working. So you can still use the modern navigation systems to manage this aircraft. Uh, the thing which is missing, 
but it's obviously kind of expected is that it doesn't have an autopilot so be aware of that so now we looked at this one let me go back and let's go to a different version or a different type of this aircraft and to be honest when i selected this one which was the first one i tried i was a little bit disappointed i thought okay hey is this it uh is this what i get for my money right again 15 euros isn't a lot of money right it's i would say pretty cheap but i would say the interior and how it looks uh don't be shocked because it's kind of expected and that's always the case with the retrofits the retrofits are simply upgraded old aircrafts so again we need to wait for it to load and then we can have a look at it The cool thing is, of course, that you have both the uh, one engine and three engine options, right? You can select the one engine or three engine, and this is what I meant, right? So this is what you will get if you are trying the, I would say, original version. So the original version has, well, not so many options as the uh, previous one, right? It has the um, oil temperature, the uh, altitude, the oil and then we have some other options here. Uh, not sure what this is. Indicator of VTES. Probably this is the speed or something. The clock, the RPMs, and the, I'd say, banking. The funny thing is that you can see that they spend a lot of time on this because they also made changes or also translated this. So, right, so in this case, this is the Dutch language uh, for those who are not aware of that. Uh, here we've got also the compass. And here we've got the multiple options to switch on the battery, the engines, the primer, and the fuel switch. In this case, we only have, let's say, a few of these buttons. And that's expected because we only have one engine, right? Here's the magneto. Here's uh, the other option, the valve. And uh, you can see that some of the options or some of the labels are not translated. Uh, and that's, that's really cool. They left it there. In this case, we've got only the throttle and the mixture on this end. And here we've got the anti-ice. So don't think that this is to do the, uh, I would say, the RPM, to troll the RPM. That's not the case. Uh, other than that, right, it's, I would say, exactly, well, almost exactly the same. Uh, now I lost where I was. So on the top, we don't have any buttons, right? So don't seek... Don't think you're missing something because this is as it normally should be if you want to fly an old aircraft. To show you one more, I will go to the three engine uh, aircraft and the, the, the Fokker using the three engines and also the old style engine to show you how that one looks. Uh, so we need to adjust the time a bit. I'm gonna use this one so you can recognize it here you can see 3m which stands for three uh three engines so we're gonna set the, oh no we're gonna, not gonna depart from the runway that's probably not a good idea so let's do it from here adjust the time again because if you don't do it it will be too dark and we can't see anything so in total you get five types where one of them, the retrofit, contains the most, I'd say, liveries. Uh, all the other ones are only, I would say, available using one livery. Uh, so don't be, I would say, uh, too surprised if you only see one livery. Uh, so this is the one with three engines, right? You can see there are some changes here, right? So they modified the options here. The magnetos are now three of them. Uh, the panel has a little bit been updated. Uh, also the... Um, say meters the gouges are completely translated also to english probably this one was released later than the uh, one than, than the single uh, single engine one uh park and brake uh funny that it says park and brake probably that's an i can't imagine that you set the park and brake here but maybe that's an issue here we've got the throttles uh throttle is a little bit limited right because you can't set the uh mixture and you also can't set the rpms but it's fine here's the uh compass the rpms again for three engines the airspeed the turning angle the altitude here we can see the rest of the meters like the oil and temperature uh, which are there uh, other than that right 
same as the single engine one, there's nothing here, but again, that's kind of expected. Uh, how does the outside look? Well, almost ex almost the same as the previous one, although this one looks a little bit more modern, right? Uh, also, if we go inside the aircraft, we can see that this is different compared to the uh, retrofit. In this case, we only, oh, only have uh, two chairs, almost looks like a kitchen chairs, right? And the stairs then, and then uh, small, small stairs, and then up to the uh, cockpit of the uh, aircraft. So a lot of things which are really nice, a lot of detail. Uh, these ones you, you can't open, at least not what I found out. Uh, so a lot of details, a lot of cool things, including, I would say, this was, I would say, one of the preview uh, pictures which they released, right? The, the nice detail of the propellers. Really cool to see, and also the engine looks really, really nice. Uh, cool to fly with, but that's for another video, right? In another video, we're going to uh, fly using the retrofit one, because I'm going to show you also how you can start the engines, etc. So keep an eye on my channel for that. Here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.